All right. Okay. Um, so again, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Shell. I am the Administrative Director for Leadership Fellows New York. Uh, any and all pronouns, totally fine. Um, I'm joined today by my colleague, Janae. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Janae. I'm the Communications Officer here at Leadership Fellows New York. And um, as in my title implies, I handle a lot of day-to-day -day communications. Yep, absolutely. Uh, and I handle a lot of the uh, overarching, you know, administrative operational work with the program. Uh, normally, we would be joined as well by our director, Michael Seltzer, but unfortunately, he could not make it today. Um, he does really love meeting uh, prospective fellows, but unfortunately, uh, didn't work out with his schedule today. But if you do get into our program, uh, I promise you, you will have the opportunity to meet him. Um, some of you might actually know him, because as far as I know, he seems to know everybody in the nonprofit sector in New York. Um, but anyway, um, our program today is going to be pretty simple. Um, we are going to give um, an overarching introduction to the Leadership Fellows New York program, um, assuming that you've never um, heard of this before. You know, a lot of this web uh, information is on our website, but it can be kind of difficult to go through everything, all that text that we have. Um, so we'll be giving it to you um, all today. Um, after the kind of overview of the program, um, Janae and I will present that jointly. Uh, we will be joined um, by a mentor from the program and a former fellow who will give you their perspectives, you know, on, uh, you know, what it's like to be part of this program. Um, and at the end, uh, because I think we should move through everything quite quickly, um, at the end, there will be time to take a Q&A from all of you um, on anything, you know, any questions that you might have. So... Uh, let me get started. Where is my slide deck? Here it is. I'll just pop it up. Awesome. So everybody can see that, right? Yes. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Miguel. Um, okay, so... Um, again, I'll get started. Um, welcome to our virtual open house. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we're going to be covering, uh, you know, various aspects of our program as well as fall 2023 um, nominations. Um, here is our beautiful spring 2023 cohort. <laughs> Would love to see them. And let me just jump into it. Whew. Okay, so for starters, um, again, we are Leadership Fellows New York. We were formerly known as the New York Community Trust Leadership Fellows Program. Um, so if you ever heard of that name, uh, we're actually the same program, but we took on a different name uh, because uh, in certain senses, the New York Community Trust is kind of letting us fly. Um, uh, not that they're not supporting us anymore, my gosh, no, but more like we're becoming our own initiative. Um, we were created when the New York Community Trust approached Baruch College um, for basically a leadership development program for nonprofit practitioners. Um, this was back in 2015. Um, and so our director, Michael, he's a professor with the Mark School of Public and International Affairs. Um, he joined together with the Center for Nonprofit Strategy and Management, um, and its director, George Mitchell, who has been a very close ally of the program. And basically, they created this program. Um, it is uh, totally free of charge to nonprofits uh, throughout the city um, and provides professional development um, for the fellows that apply to it. Um, we are funded by various foundations. Um, Obviously, the New York Community Trust, uh, the Fund for the City of New York, that Ford Foundation, Robin Hood, um, and all of these foundations, um, they are, we, we basically offer ourselves as a service to them. Um, so all of their grantees become eligible for our program. Uh, I will note that Robin Hood is not funding us this year. So if you have funding from Robin Hood, it technically doesn't count towards eligibility for a program. Um, but we're always willing to kind of talk about that. 
Um, I will get into eligibility more later down, down the line, um, but just so you know, uh, we have these kinds of partnerships with foundations where all of their grantees become eligible for our program. Um, that is how our service model works. Um, and so again, today we'll be going through uh, this curriculum, our overall curriculum, I should say. Um, Janae will cover the syllabus and program requirements. Um, I will talk a little bit more about the eligibility part, uh, whether or not you are eligible. Um, and then Janae will talk about leadership conversations, um, a couple of other odds and ends like our knowledge hub. Um, and after that, we'll move into um, comments from our mentor and our fellow. Um, so bear with my voice a little while longer. I'm just going to talk about the our general curriculum. So for fall 2023, our fellowship is going to comprise 12 instructional sections. That means you are meeting with us 12 weeks. Um, we meet every Friday. Um, I think our dates this year are from October 6th to January 12th. Do I have that correct, Jay? Right. Yes. yes, exactly. Um, and we have a couple of days off for holidays um, throughout the winter. So uh generally you will be covering topics such as um, creating organizational belonging communications social media strategy financial management organizational culture marketing fundraising um, all of these topics are covered by our curriculum i have been told before that our professional development model is a slightly different from other fellowships throughout the city in that we uh, we cover this kind of general overview of all kinds of things that leaders of nonprofits would need to know, as opposed to diving in really, really deep into one specific subject. Um, so our program is more of a generalist model in that sense. Our objective is to make sure that, um, you know, emerging executive directors of nonprofits have all of the knowledge they need to know to run their organizations. So that is why our curriculum model is more generalist, covers all kinds of topics across um, you know, subject areas. Um, all, course, all of our courses, uh, sessions I should say, all of our sessions are taught through a race and gender lens. Uh, what does this mean? It means that every subject we cover um, has a race and gender lens component to it. Um, so say for example, when our instructors are teaching fundraising, um, they may talk openly, for example, about, you know, things like it, it may be more difficult for, you know, let's say if you are a black woman um, to be taken, um, you know, to be respected at, at the fundraising table and why, you know, how we can break down those barriers, how we can conquer those barriers. Um, and so that is something that we address openly, the intersectionality of people. Um, we try to be supportive of all genders, all races, um, all people. Um, all of our fellows receive a certificate of completion from the Mark School at Baruch College. Um, I want to be clear about something. The certificate, uh, very much it's a credential that you can put on your resume. Um, I do want to note that it's not a credit bearing certificate. So if you go on to Baruch later, um, you apply to the Mark School for, let's say, um, an MPA um, in the public affairs sector. Uh, it won't count as a credit bearing course. Uh, but you do get the certificate. Um, after completing the weekly sessions portion of the fellowship, uh, you will gain access to our network of alumni throughout the city, and you have the chance to attend all of our future sessions, alumni gatherings, and events. Um, these include the leadership conversations, which we'll cover later, uh, but also like, you know, let's say you graduate from fall 2023. You ever want to come back for spring 2025, attend any of our sessions, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, so that's kind of the benefit of our program. One more thing I want to cover is that the fellowship centers around the development of your change project. What's a change project, right? Um, so a change project is an initiative that is of front burner importance to your organization. Um, it is a task that you, um, and I'm speaking with you saying like you might be a, a participant, right? Like you develop this project with your executive director um, and has to address um, some kind of challenge or opportunity facing their organizations. Um, if you happen to be in the chat right now, you're the executive director and you're thinking about nominating somebody, 
that person has to be working on a change project. Um, and that change project will inform um, all of the learning that they do in our program. Um, so here's a couple of examples of change projects. Um, developing a corporate giving program, um, building a volunteer management system, um, you know, developing a data dashboard at your organization, um, educational outreach, performance review process. All these things are projects that you could be working on at your organization. Um, your executive director has to approve of it. And when you are in our um, program, all of the sessions you do will kind of go back and inform your change project. So let's say you're doing this uh, data dashboard. Um, you're in the social media session. You might be thinking of, you know, how to how do I apply this to my change project? Um, that is kind of the learning model that we go through. All right. Um, and one more thing I'm going to cover about a curriculum is that all of our fellows are matched with a mentor. Uh, we have a pool of about, I want to say 60 to 70 mentors um, who are all, you know, nonprofit experts in some field. Um, and when you're in our program, uh, you get matched with one of these mentors um, to work on your change project. Um, you may want a specific uh, mentor who's like, you know, got expertise with that change project. So, you know, let's say you're working on an organizational health initiative, um, you might want to go for a mentor who has had experience in public health before. Um, the mentorship is, the, the hard lines around it are that there are at least four one hour meetings. You might want to do like eight 30 minute meetings, that's okay. But the idea is you meet with them for four hours um, to talk about your change project. Uh, we'll talk about this more, uh, you know, if you actually get accepted. Uh, but I do want you all to know that, you know, part of our program model is you get this mentorship as well. All right. Um, so my colleague, Janae, will take away the syllabus and requirements. Hey, um, good afternoon again, everyone. Um, so in regards to our um, syllabus and, and program requirements, um, all the fellows who participate participate in our program are required to attend all the sessions. Um, they are also um, required to complete all of the um, assigned readings, assignments and assessments, whether they be distributed by um, the instructors or the fellowship staff, which would be um, myself, Shell and Michael. Um, they are also required to attend our leadership conversations. These happen about once a month, um, maybe once every two months um, on either a Monday or a Wednesday evening. Um, and as um, Shell mentioned, um, one of the requirements are also that the fellows um, meet with the mentors at least four times. Um, our classes begin at nine and they end at four. Um, breakfast is served at 8 a.m. and lunch is served from 12 to 1 p.m. Um, in regards to attendance, again, um, fellows are actually allowed up to two excuse absences. Um, you will need to get approval for these absences in advance from myself or Shell. Um, if you have a prior commitment um, for one of the program dates, you can certainly let us know and we can work around that if you have a conflict. Um, if you have an unexpected um, absence or any emergency that comes up, um, as of course, you know, might happen, you can also um, let us know about that and we can figure something out. Um, in regards to assignments, um, there is really the main assignment, which is the change project. And um, that is actually broken down into two deliverables. So the first is a first write-up and um, that will um, be a one pager. Um, and that is pretty much um, expanding on the idea that you gave us in, your, in the nomination form and um, telling us about the progress that you've made towards it. Um, that, uh, will be submitted um, a few weeks into um, after the beginning of the fellowship. Um, and then the second deliverable will be um, a final write-up. So that is also one pager. Um, and that is further progress that you've made towards your change project, having then been informed by the sessions and also the meetings with the mentor. Um, and that will be submitted um, on the last day of the fellowship. And that will also be accompanied by a presentation. Um, yes, and yes, that covers most of our syllabus and, and program requirements. And I'll pass it back to Shell. 
Awesome. Okay. Well, wait, did we want to do this slide with the readings and assignments? Oh, yes. Um, okay. Um, so um, a little bit more about um, what we expect of you um, throughout the fellowship. Um, obviously, everyone who participates in our fellowship is a professional. Um, they don't have a lot of time to read very long documents. Um, so we try to keep whatever readings we have you do um, before you come to the sessions or assignments to, you know, being no longer than about an hour. Um, sometimes it's just answering a few short questions um, to assist our um, instructors to make their sessions as best as possible or to facilitate some kind of activity during the session. Um, so that's that's pretty that's pretty much what we expect of you, um, aside from, of course, coming to the sessions and fully engaging in, when you're there. Awesome. Thank you, Janae. Um, again, any questions about that? We will take them at the end. Um, okay, so let me talk a bit more about the eligibility part. Um, you, and by you again, I mean, you know, if you are the fellow who is applying, uh, you must be a mid-career professional with at least five years of overall nonprofit experience and at least three years of managerial experience. Um, I know some of you are like, oh, you know, what if I've got four years? What if I've got, you know, like two years, but I have 10 years of past experience at, you know, a corporate environment. Um, Things like that generally tend to be okay. We will evaluate your nomination holistically um, in terms of the, you know, like hard year requirements. Um, we do tend to be flexible about that, but we are really looking for mid-career folks, um, you know, directors of their respective um, subject areas at their organizations. Um, that doesn't mean that you, you know, you can't get in if you're like entry level or, you know, you're just an officer or something. Um, that's that's all um, stuff that we will look at during your nomination. Um, as long as you have a solid um, kind of like um, understanding of uh, what your um, nonprofit environment is like uh, and your change project is very solid, um, there is always a chance for you to be accepted. Um, you must be nominated by your executive director or CEO. What we mean by this typically is just that we want to know that you have the support of your organization um, to apply. Um, so let's say you you come from a very, very large nonprofit. Uh, your executive director is almost never there. Or you don't really have direct access to them. Um, you can be nominated by, you know, your supervisor, let's say you're the chief of HR or, you know, the chief of operations or something. That's okay. We're not super uh, strict on being your executive director, um, but typically speaking in a smaller nonprofit, we would want it to be the executive director just to be sure um, that you have the full support of your ED and your team. Um, lastly, about eligibility, um, your organization must have recently received a grant. Uh, by recently, we mean within the last three years um, from the New York Community Trust, the Westchester Community Foundation, the Long Island Community Foundation, um, the Ford Foundation's Good Neighbor Committee, or the Fund for the City of New York. Um, one more note about the New York Community Trust is that I think they decided that the COVID grants they gave out during 2020 um, doesn't count towards eligibility of this program. Um, we have an eligibility list on our website. Um, so if you go to our site, you find the eligibility list, um, look up your org. If it's not there, feel free to send me an email. I'll give you my email later. Uh, send me an email asking, you know, telling me like, hey, here are the conditions where you've received the grant. Um, is this eligible? Um, a lot of the time you may be eligible if you're not on the list, but sometimes um, I can't swing it for you. Um, but I will always try my best to see if you're eligible to um, nominate for the program. Um, and I think if you received like, you know, a mailing about this uh, virtual open house, you are probably eligible, um, just to, you know, just to be clear. Janae, can you talk about the leadership conversations? Yes, absolutely. Um, so our leadership conversations I mentioned usually happen about once a month on a Monday or Wednesday or Monday or Wednesday evening. Uh, about 6 to 8 p.m., sometimes 5 to 7 p.m., um, and it is um, usually a panel of speakers, of chosen speakers, leaders in the nonprofit industry. Sometimes they're also um, local or government officials, um, and they are centered around a particular topic of interest to the nonprofit sector. Um, it is also 
an opportunity, of course, to dive into a particular in, into that particular topic, um, and an opportunity for the fellows as well to network network with people with other people in the nonprofit field. Um, and so, um, all the fellows who participate in the program um, are required to attend, of course. But we also hope that it is um, a good opportunity for just to. Um, learn more about, about um, a particular topic of interest to you guys in, in your particular field and to um, make professional connections. Awesome, thank you, Janae. Uh, so that's the end of my slideshow. There's one more thing we want to show you, which is our knowledge hub. Um, Janae, I'll let you put that up. Um, give me a moment, everyone. Let me actually bring up our knowledge hub. Um, in the meantime, our Knowledge Hub, um, which is hosted on our website, um, is a resource um, for, non for people in the nonprofit sector. Um, I curate articles, um, toolkits, um, podcasts as well um, that um, are of interest. Oh, um, Shell, I believe I can't share actually. Oh, this. shoot. Okay. You're right. Sorry. It's my fault. It's like the permissions on oh, Zoom. No worries. I will present it then. Give me one second to pull up our website. Okay. Here you go. Awesome. All right. Um, so here's our website, right? Um, this is free for everybody. Um, you can take this back to your organization if you want to. Um, up here, we have the Knowledge Hub. Um, if you click in, um, we've got all kinds of resources um, for everybody in the nonprofit sector. Uh, we try our best to keep things relevant. Um, so just recently, um, we've posted, you know, um, people who are dealing with chronic illness at work, um, self-care tips, um, sabbaticals um, as a topic for how to deal with uh, burnout at your nonprofit. Um, and all kinds of other resources like this, which may be uh, relevant to you. Um, oops, sorry. That's just a bug that I have with my own browser. Um, you shouldn't be affected by it, but uh, you can go down to you know other pages and go through the resources there. Um, so that concludes our presentation. Um, I see that we are joined um, by our wonderful, wonderful friend. Oh, okay. Um, I got a question in the chat. I will just take care of it real quick um, to repeat the uh, number of weeks that the program lasts. Um, the program lasts 12 weeks. Um, it's running from October 6th to January 12th. Uh, if you count, that's actually longer than 12 weeks, but that's because we have taken up a, cute, a few Fridays for holidays. Um, but you would be meeting with us 12 times. Okay. Uh, so again, we're joined by our wonderful friend um, and a former fellow from the program. Uh, well, I shouldn't say former, she's still a fellow with us, um, but she finished her, the, the session component is what I mean. Um, Rochelle Rodney from New York's Birth Control Access Program. Hi, Rochelle. Hi. Hi, Shell. So um, today I really just wanted to come in to highlight um, the things that I've learned at the fellowships program and just kind of tell my story because maybe someone can relate and um, needs to hear more about an experience from a person who's actually taken part in the fellowships program. And again, uh, my name is Rochelle Rodney. I'm currently the Director of Advocacy at the New York Birth Control Access Project. And we are a small organization and we are um, currently working on expanding access to contraception across New York State. And at our organization, as I mentioned, we are very small. And with that being said, I am constantly learning um, new roles and taking on different responsibilities that advance our mission at the organization. And prior to taking part in this fellowship, I expressed to my executive director that I wanted to have a deeper understanding of why each department is doing the things that they are doing. I've never been a fundraiser, but I became a fundraiser. <laughs> I've never had to... Um, manage a nonprofit social media account, but I currently manage our social media account. So there were many new components for me and I wanted to really find a um, internship or a fellowship that has a well-rounded understanding of how nonprofits work and how each different department impact um, the work and like the, um, like the end goal or the mission of the organization. 
And when I found the New York Leadership Fellows Program, it honestly blessed me because um, not only have they taught me how things work together at a nonprofit organization to make the mission a possibility, but these different training sessions that I've heard Shell mention many times in this call since I've been here were a game changer for me. The communications um session was honestly one of my favorite ones. There's the communications one where they get into the topic of written or written and oral communication and how there can be um like mistranslations between different people at organizations based on the written or oral communication and who has the commun who has the written communication, who's translating that communication to different people who didn't get the communication and is trying to do the work without the um the task at hand. Things like that. So they help you to do a deeper dive into different roles that people play at nonprofits and the organizational culture of your nonprofit and figuring out how to reimagine leadership and belonging in your organization and how to make sure that other people feel included as well um, as you're trying to get your work uh -huh. done, no matter the level that you are huh? um, at the organization. No. Um, not only has the Leadership Fellows equipped me with different strategic skills to communicate better, but it also helped me to build um work on building more compelling stories to translate my ideas as I do have a lot of ideas as the director of advocacy and I think that um the leadership fellows has helped me improve tremendously in building um compelling cases as to why we should implement different programming at our organization and my change project for the leadership fellows was to implement a career development program for the 70 young people that I work with and direct from all across the state. And I'm happy that um, since the program, we have started to implement that change project at our organization. And I'm looking forward to following up with them about the outcomes of what um, that has done for our young people on my um, associate board. So in summary, I had a very good time at the leadership um, fellows. Some of our cohort still meet up to this day. We have different um, events that we plan. We just did karaoke about two weeks ago. So not only has they um not only has the leadership fellows taught me new things, but it's also built um a network of people that I'm able to reach out to for different um professional advice. So now I have a new network that I'm able to tap into at any time that I need to um connect about fundraising, about an event about recruitment for my associate board. And it's just been an amazing experience for me. And if you all have any questions for me, I'll be um, happy to share. Awesome, thank you, Rochelle. It's so nice to hear uh, You know that you got a lot out of the program. Um, I can see how well you're doing. Um, I also am taking a peek right now at the uh, Birth Control Access Project's um, social media. And I'm like, wow, it looks great. Rochelle, you're killing it. Um, so, <laughs> so just as a shout out um, to everybody in the chat, um, here's the New York Birth Control Access Project's website if you want to see more about the work that they're doing. Um, I want to be conscious of time, um, and I see that Brian has joined us. Um, so hi, Brian. Hope you're doing good. Um, Brian is, he is both a former fellow and a mentor with our program. Um, he was also our, I forgot your exact title. Were you associate director? You were associate director, right? Of us uh, for a time. Um, so by all means, Brian, uh, feel free to take it away. Yeah, thank you, Shell. And um, good to see you, Janae, and good to see you, everyone who's joining us this afternoon. I'll keep this really brief. Um, you know, I have a lot of different affiliations with the Leadership Fellows, um, but I'll just quickly tell you my story. I, I was nominated for Leadership Fellows back in, um, I think it was 2018. And, um, you know, at that time I was uh, a director in my organization, Exalt Youth. And um, I didn't really know much about the program except that we were grantees of the New York Community Trust. And, you know, um, I'll be honest, you know, a lot of, um, you know, uh, executives or funders had recommended different programs for me to do because I don't know, they saw me as some kind of like emerging leader or star or something. So they said, go do this program and go do that program. And so they sent me to all these different places. 
And again, candidly, when I got recommended for the New York Community Trust Leadership Program, which is what it's called at the time, I just thought, okay, it's another program that they're going to have me do. Like they sent, they tried to send me to, you know, this institute or that institute. And so I came in, you know, just thinking like, it's going to be cookie cutter. It's going to be run of the mill. Um, but I knew immediately from the first day that it was not. And that was because I met Shell, uh, Michael, um, the other Mike who was working at Leadership Fellows at the time, Janae had not come on board yet. Um, and as soon as I met them, I knew that this was something unique and special because um, they're unique and special people. And so y'all are meeting them now through you know the virtual world. But when you get a chance to meet them in person, uh, you'll see exactly what it is that I'm talking about. There's just this level of compassion, this level of care, um, this level of thoughtfulness about you know your individual development and growth as a person. It goes beyond even what your professional trajectory is. And that's something that I didn't encounter anywhere else um, where I, you know, done all these different trainings and, and programs. So, you know, Leadership Fellows, uh, which is what it's called now, um, but used to be the New York Community Trust uh, Leadership Program, um, is a community. It's a family, you know, like once you, and I think Rochelle was kind of getting to that as well, right? Like once you're in this fold, and Michael um, will say this too, and you'll, you'll hear him say it. You're, you're in, in it for life, you're in it forever. You become a part of this uh, amazing cohort, yes. So you have peers that are also directors who are becoming you know, executive directors and moving up in life and in stages, but you really get a family. You get people who you get to go to happy hour with, um, to build with, to connect with, to vent with. There is some tears that got shed in my cohort and I'm sure they got shed in other cohorts and they might still be getting shed, but we bond around all those different experiences. So this is really a one of a kind um, experience for you. And so if you're kind of on the fence and you're not sure, do I do this? Do I not do it? Um, I really do want to encourage you to take advantage of it and to come in with an open heart, an open mind, open eyes, uh, because it is unlike anything else that's out there. I can I can definitively say that. Um, you will, of course, gain the skills and you will learn how to create an amazing change project. And you will have an opportunity to you know, learn how to be an executive director and learn how to run your program. And I'm doing all those things now. I'm executive director of an organization uh, that's based up here in Rochester. And I use many of the skills that, um, you know, I acquired through the Leadership Fellows Program every day. Um, but it's more than that, right? It's the connections, it's the, it's the people, it's the network. Um, it's that warm, fuzzy feeling of like, oh, you know, there's other people who want to actually do good things in this world. And I'm connected to them. And, you know, and they, they got my back and I got there. So, um, so yes, yeah, so that's really what I think this program is about and, and why it's so special and unique. And that's why every time that they ask me to, you know, do anything, I, I run and jump to do it, um, even with the very busy schedule that I have now. So, um, so that's it. I just think that, you know, Leadership Fellows is amazing. Um, I think that, you know, there's so much that you get out of it that is tangible, but also, you know, those, um, you know, those intangible things, those fungible aspects of, of justice, of equity, of community. Um, that is really what I believe this program stands for. Um, and I'll stop there and I don't know if anyone has any questions or you know what the next part is, but that's all I have to say. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Brian. Nothing ever gets me fired up like hearing Brian speak. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for uh, to both of you for what you said. Um, absolutely. I think a very, very strong component of our program is our community. Um, I'm literally making plans to like see um, some of our former fellows uh, like for drinks in September. Uh, very excited for it. Um, and I'm very much hoping that some people on this call um, will be part of our community in the future. Woo. Okay, so that's it, guys. Um, that is our full program that we had planned. Um, we have a good 15 minutes um, to take any Q&A questions um, from uh, that you guys might have. Um, you can use the chat, you can raise your Zoom hand, you can just unmute and ask. Uh, we're here for you right now. Thank you, Daphne. Um, she's hopping off early, but um, yeah, we're, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for that. Of course. Thank you, Veronica. Oh, of course. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me via my email address. That is shell at leadershipfellows.org. Um, I've already made some plans to follow up with some of you via email. 
Um, but if there are any questions, uh, concerns that we can take right now. All right, um, let me stop the recording. Yes, thank you, Claudia. I noticed you were here. Um, Claudia is a former fellow as well. Hi, Claudia. <laughs> thank you. All right, let me stop the recording then because it seems like we may not get any questions.